this video has been requested for a while. Um, if you're into making whip soap, chances are you've used a base and added additional ingredients such as fragrance, colour and oils. But the trouble with pre-made bases is that you're always stuck with variable ba bases depending on the manufacturer. Um, this formula will allow you to make your own consistent whip soaps and you can customise them as you wish. So this is the formula and the recipe for a 200 gram batch. Our first ingredient is our anionic surfactant with great cleansing foaming abilities, that's SCI or sodium cocal isothionate. Um, it's easier to work with in powder form as it will melt down a lot easier. Then we're pairing this with cocamida propyl betaine or cat B. This is our amphoteric surfactant which works exceptionally well with SCI to reduce irritation and enhance the foaming texture of the final product. Then in phase B we have distilled water, make sure it's distilled. Phase C is your steric acid, this is used to thicken the product, act as an emulsifier and soften the skin and help it retain moisture. You want to heat this separately as it can crystallise if it's mixed with other products before it's melted. Because this is an aqueous product, meaning containing water, we are going to need a preservative. I've chosen phenoxyethanol EHG. This is a broad spectrum preservative that's quite easy to work with and it's commonly used in products such as this. Then we have our fragrance oil. Check the IFRA for the allowance for whipped soaps and rinse off products. I'm adding kaolin clay for its cleansing properties. They aid in removing dirt and impurities from the skin and it cleanses by absorbing the excess oil. And finally, our color. You can use what you like. Um, mica works or this is our neon pigment. Uh, micas will be less bright. So first thing to do is add your cocamida propyl betaine into the SCI, not the other way around. And make sure you're wearing a respirator because it's extremely dangerous and not very pleasant to breathe SCI dust. Mix it into a thick paste and then put it aside. And what we're gonna do is heat this up uh, in a pan along with the water and the steric acid but all separately. Make sure you weigh your water first um, and then you can replace any that evaporates during the heating process. Once you've taken them off the heat, make sure they're all at roughly the same temperature. Uh, this avoids the steric acid crystallizing and pour the distilled water into the steric acid. Next, you want to put your surfactant mixture into the steric acid and water mixture. Give it a quick stir and then whisk it using an electric hand whisk. Once it resembles something like thick whipped cream, then you can move on to your phase D ingredients, which is your kaolin clay and your coloured mica or neon pigment. The kaolin is an optional ingredient and you can replace it with arrowroot powder if you wish. and whip that up again with the hand whisk to disperse the colour. So you'll see right now it's got quite a light, fluffy, almost jelly-like texture. So just give that a stir and then leave that to cool to 40 degrees C before adding your preservative and your fragrance oil and then whisk it once again. Now for the best results with this, you want to leave it for at least three hours, but ideally overnight, and you'll see the texture changes and becomes a little bit more firm and more like a whip soap that you're used to. Mm -hmm. 
I really shouldn't have used neon pink because the camera's not great at picking it up. Um, but you can see the texture's changed slightly there and it's a lot thicker. Um, and now it's ready to pipe. Give it one last whip with the hand mixer and then put it in your piping bag. Or you can put it straight into a jar if you don't like piping. And there you go, 200 gram batch fits a nice 200 gram pot. Um, just make sure you tap it down before you put the lid on. And don't forget to label and give it a batch number. If you need help with a product information file, CPSR, or batches or label information, then you can just contact us because all of that's available on our website. And this is how it foams. I didn't need to adjust the pH of this due to the ingredients used, but it's always good to check if you have a pH meter. If you don't have a pH meter, you can use those little strips that you can get in packages from Amazon or similar places. The little pot to the side is actually a sugar scrub because I thought I'd try something out. If you like, you can add glycerin to vegetable glycerin specifically to the water phase. And then once you've completed making your soap, you can add granulated sugar until you get the texture that you want. And then you have a very, very nice whip scrub. We'll be doing more whipped soap and sugar scrub videos later. Um, until then, if you want to join our Patreon, you'll find more exclusive videos and one-to-one -one business support, regulatory support, and early access to all of our YouTube videos. Um, you can find the link to that below. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and I'll see you next time. I hope this was helpful.